Today we're going to be looking at the speedrun for Chibi Robo for the GameCube, which when it comes to speedrunning is an RNG nightmare. Throughout the run, there are various resources that you have to collect, with each spawn of that resource being completely random. Cutscenes that can randomly appear throughout the run that can't be prevented, collectible items that have random spawns that can completely change where you have to go, and to top it all off, about 80% through the run, a game of roulette that if you guess wrong, can end your entire run. But what makes this game so interesting is that other than the game of roulette at the end of the run, the amount of RNG involved causes each run of Chibi Robo to be very distinct. You have to know how to route your next steps depending on how each resource falls your way, and you have many different situations where you can play your run extremely risky with the upside of saving time or playing super safe in order to keep your runs consistent. But either way you decide to play, sometimes things might just not go your way. Chibi Robo takes place entirely within the household of the Sandersons and begins with Chibi Robo being gifted to the Sanderson's daughter, Jenny, for her birthday. This section, as well as throughout the entire game, has very long cutscenes, which very heavily break up segments of the game. But after a small section where you learn how to control Chibi Robo, learn how to hover, and hand Jenny a flower, the very first day begins. The entire game of Chibi Robo is broken up into day and night cycles, which each lasts for five minutes, which already makes the speedrun pretty interesting. Major time saves occur during sections where the timer is not moving, and routes need to plan around this five minute timer to be as efficient as possible, because if your route is too short, you will end with time left over where you could have been collecting resources. But if you don't finish your route in time, the day can end completely killing your run. And since the birthday was technically day one, you start actual gameplay at night one, in which you immediately head towards the first usable item in the game, the toothbrush. Also, when Chibi Robo is running, it is always faster to run while holding his plug, but not by much. So depending on how far you have to run within each section, it may actually be faster to run with the plug on the ground as picking up the plug will also take time. One major trick throughout the game is while running, you are able to slide along the ground. This movement isn't faster, but it is crucial in order to save Chibi Robo's battery life, which when drained to zero will cause him to pass out and wake back up in his house. Every action that you can perform in this game will cause Chibi Robo's battery to drop, so performing the sliding trick, you can conserve as much battery as possible in order to complete each day's route. And once grabbing the toothbrush, you have to clean a couple of muddy spots off the ground in order to trigger the red crest cutscene. And before checking on the TV, the first difficult trick of the run, called clipping, has to be performed. In this game, most walls can be clipped through, and by sliding into the wall, opening the inventory, and immediately closing it and walking forward, when performed correctly, will clip Chibi Robo right into the wall. And for some reason, at this section of the wall, a random 100 moolah coin is hiding right out of bounds, which is the first major resource that you have to collect during this game. During this game, there are various ways to collect money, and like I mentioned before, some of the values each coin will give can be pretty random, so depending on how lucky or unlucky you get, various ways to collect the money have to be performed. But after collecting the 100 moolah coin and clipping back in bounds, you enter the Red Crest cutscene, where he gives you a suit very similar to his own, and he asks you to mimic his signature pose. It's completely random when he will perform this pose, which can save or lose time, and it requires you to have a pretty good reaction speed to mimic his move quick enough. If you don't, you just have to wait once again for him to do it, but since this is one of those times where the day timer is not counting down, it can add a decent amount of time to your run depending on his wait time as well as your reaction speed. And after getting the suit, you take it off, run over to Sophie who is writing in her diary, and she will go on about how in love with Red Crest she is. So by putting on his suit and performing his signature move, she will run away out of embarrassment, giving you access to the kitchen. Once in the kitchen, the first chibi door of the run shows up. The chibi doors are going to be the main source of moolah within the game, and while within the chibi doors, the day and night timers are not active. So by having very quick movement over the course of dozens of doors throughout the game, this is where a ton of time can be saved. You then head towards the door to the foyer and clip through the door in order to enter without having to grab the mug, which is normally required to open this door. And since the game is already out of sync with the normal pace of the cutscenes, the cutscene where the egg soldiers think you're an intruder will go off even though they aren't in the room. And another thing to note is that the battery life that Chibi Robo has, it can be recharged at any outlet within the house. And if doing so within this room, the charging will respawn the soldiers, but they will be invisible. The next part of the run is to head into the basement. You perform another clip through the wall onto this hanging plank of wood, and this clip is a bit more difficult. Typically, it's easy to clip through the wall by holding forward, placing your camera angle directly behind Chibi, and pushing forward and down to hopefully clip through pretty easily. But since this one has to be done sideways, it can be a lot more difficult. But by performing this clip, you can skip the need to use the Chibi Blaster in order to access the upper section of the basement, which will allow you to need the blaster much later on when the enemies start to show up. 
But the main goal of the upper basement is to collect moolah from a chibi door and to collect the giga charger as well as giga battery. And once collecting the giga charger, you have to head down to giga robo, which can be done by using the chibi copter to glide down to the bottom, but this wastes time as well as battery. So a trick called the plug drop can be done. By falling off of a ledge, Chibi Robo will take fall damage, but by sliding off of the edge and grabbing your plug, Chibi Robo will be invincible during the animation that it takes for him to pick his plug up and place it on his head. And thanks to the momentum given by sliding, he will slide off of the edge while grabbing his plug and not take any damage when landing on the ground. You then find Giga Robo's body and plug into him, finding out that he was once a part of the Sanderson family and somehow lost charge in his battery as well as his left leg, which then makes bringing him back to life the main goal of the game. After passing out from plugging into Giga Robo, you wake up, grab the Giga battery, and are greeted by Captain Plankbeard, who tells you about Giga Robo and basically confirms that your main goal should be to save him and that he isn't actually dead, he just needs a new battery. After learning about Giga Robo, the main story goal of Night 1 is complete, and since ending the day isn't possible yet, the rest of Night 1 consists of returning to the foyer and collecting as much moolah as possible. First by cleaning the Egg Sergeant's boots for 1,000, returning to the wall clip in the living room for another 100, and lastly, climbing the furniture to grab the remaining money up there. Then if there is still any time left in the day, you can return to the Chibi house, place the Giga battery as well as charger in the house, buy the Chibi blaster as well as the charge chip, which will allow you to charge up your blaster. Then by going outside of the Chibi house and shooting the blaster into the house, you can use up the rest of Chibi's battery, causing him to pass out. And the reason this is important is because this unlocks the trauma outfit, which when used will cause Chibi Robo to instantly pass out, which if used when far away can teleport him back to his house, which can save a lot of time opposing to having to run all the way back. Then with the remaining time left in night one, you can attempt to grab any moolah close by, which will then end the cycle. Since all of the major story checkpoints were reached in night one, the next major cutscene won't happen until night two. So the main goal of day two is just to gain as much moolah as possible. And since this day is about gaining moolah, this route is timed to exactly take five minutes, so this is as efficient as possible, and with the way this route is laid out, any small mistake can result in the last chibi door being missed by running out of time. But there is still time to be saved. By jumping on top of this outlet and hovering to the drop cord, a cutscene that normally triggers from jumping onto the cord can be prevented, and since the day timer doesn't go during cutscenes, can save a decent amount of time. Also, the reason it's important to collect as efficiently as possible on this day is that later on in the run, there will be a few ways to end the day or night cycle, and by already having enough money by the time those days come, no time will be needed to collect money on those days. After plug dropping down to the living room, you charge inside and then head to one of the more difficult sequences of the run. To conserve as much battery as possible, the rest of day two is going to require sliding whenever possible, as the rest of the day is going to take place outside where there aren't any outlets to charge. So not only is there a huge time pressure, outside requires very good energy conservation, as well as a total of three clips. One through the door to get outside, the spider web to get up the tree, and then lastly, the bird nest at the top of the tree, which is one of the harder clips in the run. And typically these skips can be performed in a handful of attempts and be fine, but since this day is on such a strict time frame and battery life, failing any of these clips too much will result in much less money for the following days, or even worse, running out of battery on top of that will result in even more time being lost. This moment is one of the completely RNG moments of the run. During the start of a cycle, Chibi Robo's friend Telly will always tell you how you are doing as a Chibi Robo compared to others out there in the world, and by pure chance will sometimes decide to praise you a bit extra, giving you an extra cutscene which can add a decent amount of time to your run. There's currently no way to manipulate or predict if this is going to happen, just at the beginning of every cycle there's a chance that it can happen and it can really start to add up if triggered a handful of times. Now for night two, since the chibi blaster has been purchased, by leaving, re-entering, and leaving the chibi house, the spy doors will now spawn, which provide us with the second important resource of the run, scrap. Whenever a spy door is killed, it will drop scrap, which is needed to purchase items such as the chibi ladder, which will help you traverse into higher up spaces, as well as the chibi teleporter, which can save you a ton of time by teleporting you from one room to another. The main issue with collecting scrap is that spy doors, when killed, do not drop a guaranteed amount and depending on your luck of the scrap, a handful of different routes have to be taken. And not only do the spy doors drop a random amount of scrap when killed, they also have multiple different spawn locations with multiple different spawn counts. They can potentially spawn in three or four different locations within each room, so by going to the kitchen, the first potential location is immediately to the right. And if they don't spawn, then the scrap needs to be collected later. But for now, the goal is just to collect more moolah within the kitchen, and this is the first encounter where moolah gains become a bit random. Every single time Chibi Robo opens a door, there's a random chance to either gain 10, 50, or 100 moolah from the drawer, or none at all. And throughout the course of the run, you can either gain not enough moolah and have to route accordingly, or too much moolah, which also requires you to route accordingly. 
So in just about every run, your moolah collection will differ based on what luck you get with the doors. And the reason too much moolah is a problem is that whenever Chibi Robo dies or starts the day, Telly will have an extra piece of dialogue if Chibi Robo has any extra money. But if you die while holding no money at all, this dialogue can be completely skipped. So by collecting the exact amount of money needed to purchase all of the future upgrades, you can save time by having no money left whenever you respawn later in the run. And then all that is left in the kitchen is to loot two chibi doors and find the spy door spawn in order to gather enough scrap as well as finding them in the foyer. And unlike moolah, you can have more scrap than is needed and there isn't really a penalty, so just making sure you can gather enough is all that matters. Now since there's a little bit of extra time during night 2, you can run downstairs and trigger the Pico cutscene, which is going to be needed in order to make use of Pico later on in the run. And since you're already in the basement, the same basement clip as before needs to be used to get to the rest of the doors there. Depending on the spy door spawns as well as how long the basement clip takes, this route can be extremely tight towards the 5 minute mark. And since getting all the way back to these doors within the basement takes a really long time, missing any of them can be extremely detrimental if the day timer runs out. For the start of day three, you need to purchase the living room, kitchen, and foyer ladders with the scrap that you collected in order to progress with the main story. And with the purchase of these ladders, introduces one of the more difficult tricks of the run, Teriyaki Blues. The current world record does not attempt Teriyaki Blues as it can be pretty difficult, and if performed, it needs to be performed 12 times throughout the run. But once the ladder has been brought to the living room, whenever leaving the stairs of the chibi house, a cutscene will trigger in which Telly starts to sing the iconic Teriyaki Blues. But by using the plug drop trick within the chibi house, you can actually leave the house and stay on top of the stairs. And then by hovering towards the wall behind the chibi house, the zone to trigger the cutscene can be skipped. But this cutscene zone lasts the rest of the game. So from here on out, if going for teriyaki blues, every single time you leave the chibi house, this trick has to be done. And if it has failed five times throughout the entire 12 attempts, it ends up being worse than just dealing with the cutscene. The rest of day three is to make sure you have enough scrap to buy the teleporter and then to progress the main story by using the chibi ladder in the foyer to go upstairs towards the bedroom. And after climbing the stairs and charging outside of the bedroom, the frog cutscene is triggered. One thing to note about Chibi Robo speedruns is there are a handful of different categories. The English GameCube version, the Japanese GameCube version, and then the Wii New Play Control version, which only was released in Japanese. The length of a cutscene within Chibi Robo is determined by the amount of characters in each text box as they are loaded one by one, and with this game having a ton of cutscenes that aren't skippable, the Japanese version is much, much quicker due to there being less characters within each cutscene. The other major differences are that Teriyaki Blues can only be performed within the GameCube version, and then a skip that crashes the GameCube version can only be performed within the Wii version that saves a lot of time. Within the bedroom, the only required task is to open up the peephole so that the bedroom can be entered at nighttime. But since it is optimal to hit the peephole last, the cycle can also be pretty strict. By climbing up to the top of the bedroom, a couple of wall clips have to be performed in order to get outside of the bedroom and wrap back around to hit the chibi doors much quicker. And since there are multiple clips that have to be hit, it can very easily end a run due to running out of time. And for anyone curious or wanting to get into speedrunning this game or even playing casually, the 5 minute timer can be extended to a 10 minute timer or a 15 minute timer, which makes most of these routes extremely manageable and much more forgiving. So this level of execution isn't required for a brand new player, but obviously increasing the day timer will substantially increase the length of the run. But after looting the two chibi doors at the top of the bedroom, you just have to copter over to the peephole switch, opening the latch to end the day. Night 3 is the first cycle of the run that can end before the timer runs out, which makes movement much more important as well as having collected enough money from the previous cycles. At the start of Night 3, you have to immediately use the foyer teleporter, go upstairs and talk to mom. You find out that she is suspicious of her husband lying about their expenses, so she tasks you with searching for a receipt downstairs. And by using a trauma suit, you can teleport downstairs immediately. And while talking to mom, you have an option to tell her that you were worried about her, which can give you a little bit extra money. So depending on your luck with the previous drawers, can be used to help you out, but it will lose you a bit of time as you'll get extra dialogue as well as gaining happy points, which will add another dialogue the next time you talk to Telly, but it can help if necessary. After talking to mom, you then trauma warp all the way back to the chibi house by causing yourself to pass out, and once back in the living room, you can jump onto the furniture and find the receipt behind dad. You then have to immediately run back to the teleporter, talk to mom to show her the receipt, and it immediately ends night three with exactly 6,140 moolah. At the start of day four, the main goal is to collect 6,870 moolah as well as performing the divorce section of the story. So once running into the kitchen, a trick that is surprisingly only used once can be done in order to skip a cutscene with Sophie called Drawer Glitch. 
Whenever you pull a drawer out, you can once again pull the drawer by facing the direction you want to move the drawer, grabbing the drawer, and resetting your camera immediately. This will cause the drawer to continuously slide in the direction that you want, being able to pull any drawer in the game any place that you want. And this seems like it could lead to so many different applications, but as things are now, this is the only one that is actually useful during the 80% run of Chibi Robo. Towards the sink in the kitchen, by normally jumping up the handle, a cutscene with Sophie will trigger, but by using the door to hover onto the first handle, the cutscene can be skipped, which the time it takes to drag the door is much quicker than dealing with the cutscene. But the reason you need to get up here in the first place is to grab a spoon from the dish rack. And the reason you need the spoon is that later on in the run, a dog bone needs to be obtained by digging it out of the ground. And there actually is one spawn where the dog bone doesn't actually have to be dug out, so there is a route called spoonless that just means you completely skip the spoon section and you just gamble that the bone doesn't spawn outside side, which can potentially save a lot of time, but it's also pretty unlikely and it adds yet another RNG section to the run that can completely end it if it doesn't work out. All that is left of day four is to essentially be a messenger between mom and dad. You deliver a message to mom, she gives you a letter to dad, he reads that she wants a divorce and that she thinks her daughter is weird, and then you return to mom. She then decides she'll make you some pajamas out of her husband's used boxers, and you end off the day with exactly 6,870 moolah. And now it's time for Pico. In this run, you need well over 12,000 moolah to buy everything necessary to beat the game. But luckily or unluckily for us, Pico runs a bit of an underground casino, and the way that he works is you can give him any amount of money that you want, and you bet on either his left eye or his right eye. And whichever one opens is the winner. So after an hour and a half, the entire run relies on a game of roulette. And in the early days of Chibi Robo, the roulette required you to Pico two times in a row, which is much more RNG dependent, so luckily this route only allows for one. When going to Pico, you can save at the outlet just beforehand as a failsafe, and if you fail on Pico, you can reset the game and try again. But this obviously takes time, so by opting out of it, you can just go to Pico and risk the run. But if you just so happen to hit, it's mostly soothe sailing from here. There's no more RNG moolah locations, no random scrap encounters, and the last major RNG of the run is where the dog bone is. And unless you decided to attempt spoonless for some reason, it won't lose a huge amount of time, no matter where the bone is. But as far as the end of the cycle goes, you just have to head outside to start the alien encounter by removing the plants outside. The alien ship will spawn, and then Chibi Robo will try to communicate with them. He then learns he needs a way to understand them. So you then return to the Chibi house, and you spend the rest of your moolah to charge the Giga battery, as well as purchasing the alien ear chip. You then head back outside, and you can finally communicate with the aliens. You learn that the aliens are friends of Giga Robo, and they want to see him. And by trauma warping inside to save a bit of time, you can lead the aliens to the basement. And this is one of the situations where having exactly zero moolah can save you a decent amount of time by not having to listen to Telly complain that you passed out with money in your pocket. But there is one trick that is faster than the trauma warp and is the most recent discovery of Chibi Robo. Typically, when entering the living room with the aliens, Drake Redcrest will think they're intruders, and he'll cause you to have to sit through a cutscene, which the trauma warp can normally prevent. But by hovering over the door just above the cutscene trigger, you can immediately run inside and skip the cutscene entirely. Once the aliens see Giga Robo, they see that he is out of commission, and they get extremely sad, and they just return to their ship, which ends night five. And now for the start of day six, it's another day that can end without the timer counting down, as all you have to do is return to the upstairs and collect your newly fashioned PJs from mom, and you can use the PJs to immediately end the cycle. Night five isn't necessary, and thanks to the PJs, you can just end it going into day six, which will be the last day before the final fight. And during day six is when you have to search for the dog bone within the kitchen. If you attempted boneless and it's there, you grab it and immediately go to sleep. If it's not there, your run's over. But assuming you didn't attempt boneless, if the bone isn't there, you can just go to sleep to start the final cycle. At the start of night six, you run outside to search for the dog bone. If you didn't find it in the kitchen, you dig it out of the ground and you head towards the aliens. The aliens are still in their depressed state and since they're so upset, you can just take advantage of them. You can steal their teleporter, which requires a bit of Simon Says. By getting red initially on Simon Says, you can just mash the next colors as fast as possible to get them all instantly. And even though the aliens continuously beg you to stop taking advantage of them and to stop activating the time machine, you can just ignore them and you go into the past. And once in the past, there are two main objectives. You have to first grab the schematic papers out of the trash, and then you use the bone to distract the dog so you can see the passcode for the briefcase that contains Giga Robo's leg. And even though the code for the briefcase is the exact same in every playthrough, you have to make sure to read it or else you will be unable to open the case. And once the two objectives are done within the past, you can just use the Chibi Blaster to deplete your battery and you head back to the present. 
You then head upstairs to the briefcase, and at the briefcase, you can then clip inside to grab Gigarobo's leg. And even though the code is never used, if the code is never read from the past, whenever clipping into the case to grab the leg, on the GameCube version, the entire game will crash. Within the Wii version, you never have to read the code, which means you never have to get the bone, and that means you never have to get the spoon. So this can all save a significant amount of time. But since the entire game breaks on the GameCube, all of those steps have to be done. And if the clip isn't completed in the first few attempts, the spiders located in the case will spawn and this will make the clip much more difficult, which typically just requires you to put in the code anyways. But once Giga Robo's leg is grabbed, the Spidor cutscene starts and begins the final segment of the run. With all the Spidors running rampant throughout the house, you find out that the Spidors were actually designed by Dad, but they were turned evil by the company, resulting in him leaving his job, which makes his wife less angry at him for being unemployed. Dad then decides to run upstairs to grab his tools, and while he's searching for his tools, you just have to distract the Spidors as you can't kill them yet. This is pretty simple to do, you just avoid taking damage and stand off to the side within the arena. You can also clip out, which will make it to where you can just stand there and not do anything, but it doesn't really make a difference. Once Dad returns with his tools, he will then give you an upgraded blaster that allows you to kill the stronger Spidors, which leads you to returning to the foyer to defeat the rest of the enemies. The quickest way to kill these large Spidors is by using the charge blast to one-shot them, but you have to make sure that their invincibility frames go away before shooting them, which lasts until about a second after they land. And after clearing out the foyer, once back in the living room you see the entire family is tied up hanging from the ceiling, you go help them, and you find the final boss, the Queen Spidor. The Queen Spidor fight, it's pretty simple. All that's required is to charge shot her as much as possible, and her only main mechanic is trying to grab you by sucking you in. But as long as you run away whenever that happens, it's a pretty straightforward and quick fight. You knock off all the furniture, and eventually finish her off. And once she is defeated, the Sanderson family marriage is restored, and all that's left is to bring back Giga Robo. And if you decided to do Teriyaki Blues, even still, you have to keep doing it. But this would be the 12th and final time the skip would have to be done. And once leaving the living room, you head all the way back down to the basement. And when returning back to Giga Robo, there is a code on his foot that has to be inputted in order to turn him back on. But unlike the briefcase code, you don't actually have to find it in order to put it in. The code is on Dad's wedding ring within the sink, but this can be completely ignored. You then type it in from memory, and once placing the battery, leg, and inputting the code, the time for the speedrun stops. And that is the obscure speedrun that is Chibi Robo. It's an RNG heavy run with many different routes that can change on the fly, depending on what resources you're given, as well as having a ton of different tricks and glitches. And overall, it's a pretty cool speedrun to watch. If you want to learn more or even give the game a shot for yourself, you can go check out their Discord. I'll leave a link to it down below. And subscribe if you want to see more obscure speedruns like this. Thanks for watching.